Our talk ne next is uh, Vince Pregnano, Automate Your Infrastructure. Uh, Vince is an infrastructure engineer at Segment, and he's going to talk about infrastructure at scale. So let me welcome Vince. Hello, everyone. So I work at Segment. I joined, la uh, I think, last May. Uh, has been great so far. We like every day on infrastructure. But let me tell you a story before I start this talk. Like every good story has a good beginning. And the segment started in 2013 with four people crafting code from a tiny little apartment and selling contracts from a closet. So a company usually starts with little steps. And when, um, and when you start something new, you basically like trying to prove that you are the best class, right? And the weirdest thing about starting a new thing is that like, you are basically going through a discovery process. You want to use the latest technology, maybe because it's always on the front page of Hacker News or something. So alongside the discovery process, you start building one piece at a time. Maybe you start your first EC2 instance, um, maybe without a load balancer, who knows, right? Um, so you're basically trying to deliver something as fast as possible because you have to prove something. Then your company starts growing, and one day you find out that you have 2,000 instances running it, and because you have to scale up at some point, because you have more customers, you have more load, um, but you don't know what your next change will impact, if you're going to break something or not. So at Segment, we spend a lot of time thinking about how we can improve our infrastructure. And the last five months, I've been like full hands-on on this thing. So in the early days, our infrastructure was pretty hacked together. Um, everything was provisioned through the, to the UI, a graveyard of unused AMIs, underutilized instances. So we didn't come from an off background, but we needed to get the product delivered and get market fit. So before starting, let me say for a second, let, let me tell you what we mean for infrastructure for automating your infrastructure. So segmenting is growing fast every day. We are onboarding, like, I think around 10 customers every day and more enterprise customers every week. So we define infrastructure automation as a set of tools that everybody should use to make their job better. So we started thinking, what if we will start from scratch again from today so Segment is entirely built on, on Amazon Web Services, and we use a vast number of, uh, of AWS services, and we take advantage of everything that they can offer. So how can we make the infrastructure better? And we started thinking about environments in a really profound way. So the first thing is that we basically like started from scratch. We basically graveyard our old AWS account, and we created a new account. Then we started thinking, we want really separation between a staging, a development environment, and a production environment. So we reinvest our work hours and night hours in figure out what we really wanted and what we wanted to achieve. So we came up with this solution. Separ separate all AWS accounts. You have true isolation for free. And at the moment, we have four different accounts. One is for dev, one for staging, one for production. And the other one is what we call the ops accounts. It's basically an account that has nothing in it, um, apart from having uh, all the users in it. So everybody in the company has an IAM account in it. And the permission are set up using roles so that we can have fine-graded permission for each user. So this means that there is only one login point. We can restrict access. Um, so instead of having like a, a lot of complex IAM setups um, and mixing staging and production in the same environment, we just have true isolation for free. Um, and of course, um, we achieved this like after basically find, finding Terraform. So right now, dev is only used for if you like, want to try something new that doesn't impact our infrastructure. So we spent a lot of time thinking, 
what can we do for making this article convenient and easy to set up? So staging and production are right now perfectly mirrored between each other. So, and you can, like, you can imagine that like, you can achieve that with Terraform just copying files, and that's awesome. So we have this one repo where we define our own infrastructure. It's called segment.io slash infrastructure. Of course, it's private. Um, so everything there uh, has Terraform files. We split the environments in folders. One is called staging, one is called production. And we share modules between them. We can share code. Uh, we can share Terraform. The other nice thing is that only infrastructure engineers have access to this repo. So you don't end up like basically someone forced push it and then everything breaks. Because the other part, the other nice thing is that we provision everything through Circle CI. We don't share, we were using um, basically Git to, stir, uh, to store the, the, the state, Terraform state, but it wasn't causing conflicts if two infrastructure engineers were working at the same time. So we moved everything to Circle and we're now storing the state on S3. So every time, um, a new build, if you want to like basically modify our infrastructure, you just make your changes and then you push it to circle. If the plan fails or if the apply fails, um, the, the infrastructure won't change. So, and this is like really nice because we can, ch we can have like a perfect mirror environment between staging and production. So staging is right, really isolated and you cannot basically mix up change that you, make, that you do there into production. So in my experience with AWS, I never found a tool that was as safe and as flexible as Terraform. I was a little impressed. I was skeptical at first, but then impressed. So every time I have to modify an instance type or scale up or down a cluster, change a security group, I, like, every day I think, this is saving me so much time. So in the past month, we haven't been studying the Terraform with new plugins. One, for example, was the ability to automate services, uh, so automate um, basically monitors and dashboard in Datadog. And those are a really, a really nice thing to, to have. So this is like the kind of flexibility that lets you really use a tool and rely on it. So where Docker for us describes how our services run, Terraform is the glue that ties everything together. So making changes in our infrastructure is now generally seamless. Instead of always turning up and down the infrastructure, we will rely on Terraform to, to do the changes. So it's re reproducible, auditable, and self-documenting because you have the, your whole infrastructure somewhere. We haven't reached the, the holy grail, but we will do our best to basically make, uh, to basically be the best in class for the infrastructure automation. Right now, Segment is processing around 40,000 events per second, and the infrastructure is maintained only five, for, with five engineers. So this, this was really awesome for us. So it, let us, it, will, it will let us scale, but for now, it will let us having everything under control. As part of our revamp, when we moved from the old infrastructure to the new one, we want to use containers. Um, so right now, we decided to, to use Elastic ECS, Elastic Container Service, in Amazon. And the, bi the biggest single benefit that we have seen is that we don't need to provision anymore. We just give the, the, the cluster a container, and it will run, hopefully. <laughs> So the container guarantee, the other nice thing about containers is that it guarantees that the same code will run everywhere, um, even in our development environment. So why ECS? So we transitioned to Docker. So we found out that ECS was really powerful for our needs. Because ECS takes care of the scheduling for you and all the, the annoyances that you don't have to. Um, it, ensu it ensures that a service run a separate host, so it also uh, basically load balance between services. And um, it also has this smart resource management that sometimes it fails to be that smart, but it was really powerful for us to reuse resources that were not being used. And 
this is how we maintain our ECS. So we provision a cluster, and as you can see, this cluster has three instances, and, and we run three services in this example. All these services are behind an ELB. Again, this is all set up with Terraform. Um, so each service is run on a shared cluster, and as you can see, the ELB, it, we basically like the service will attach the, the ELB um, on listening on, on a particular port. Now, this was really powerful for us because we didn't need service discovery or configuration. We just went for conventions in here. And that was something that we really, like, in the end, uh, we were skeptical about this, but when we tried it out, we were like, this is awesome. So, the other thing that basically ties everything together is how we provision these instances. We have a basic AMI for right now. Uh, the basic AMI, when, when it boots up, we have a user script that runs all these things that we need. For example, we use an SQ, we use Datadog, and we use Logspout with the Logly forward to, to go to Logly. And we are also trying out Elasticsearch. So having this configuration is really powerful so that we can try new things every day. Without bringing up new, our own infrastructure, we can just scale up with the new instances and bring down the old one. ECS will take care of basically running the new services. So again, this is also, everything goes into Terraform. So the next thing that I want to talk about is development. As segment, um, we had to basically think about how we can make uh, developers powerful. Not only infrastructure developers, because we know a lot more stuff about infrastructure than, nor, than the other developers, but everybody in the company. Even if you're a front-end engineer, you, you need the, the right tools to do your job. So we dig deeper, and we said, apart from having that dev account, on AWS, how can we make it better for them? And how can we make sure that everybody is updated every day with the new tools that we want to give them? So let me introduce to you what we call internally the Docker VM. So we switched to Docker, and the first thing that we noticed was the ability to run the exact same binary of code in different environments. So we want to reuse Docker principles and experience that we, that we learned in automating staging and production to basically automate the process for each engineer in our company. So we run a bunch of tools to set up a VM for new, for new engineers. So when a new engineer come in and will get his computer set up, we only install three or four things right now. One is Docker, one is Go, uh, because we use the Go path, and why is it Docker Compose? And Docker VM comes in in a really nice way. It means that you reduce the number of dependencies that the host machine needs, and you can do all your work inside the Docker VM. That means that the Docker VM is always updated through OTA updates from Docker Hub, with the latest tool that we want to be available. But the, the, other, the other thing that we thought it was about security, because we don't want everybody that has this Docker VM to just like run something on AWS. So we are authenticating the user when, when, when they first set up the, the Docker VM. So they, had, they will have permissioning, and they will, um, and they will be able to, to basically use some set of tools. So on each run, we make sure that the, the Docker VM is updated. So when you, when, you sign, so when you sign in, the Docker VM will check if it has anything to, to be updated. And we will ask you if you want to update the VM. So this was the thing that, like right now, we use every day to make sure that every developer has the tools that he needs and every tool is always updated. And you can now escape the update, it's like we force it. So it's a nice way to have everything on the same page, everyone on the same page. 
The other thing is microservices. So the developer experience now happens inside the Docker VM. The, not, the, the other thing that we needed and we needed to automate was how we created microservices. So we created a toolkit that we call Kit. Um, so after our move to Docker, uh, we need this toolkit to basically automate how we run everything on ECS. And we didn't want to give, like, to give the burn to the developers to say, I have to create a Docker file, make file, circle file, everything like that. So Kit comes with a command line program. It doesn't make any assumption on the application that you want to run. It just says, um, give me something, a name and a version, and, and some function that I have to, to handle. And you can also pass a, a configuration that's not shown here. Um, and the configuration providers are dynamic. So we run now, because we run everything in Docker, we only use command, command line arguments or environment variables for now. But Kit is itself extendable, so you can write a new configuration provider and just have it ready there. The other thing was that we wanted to, um, to create a DC CLI, to create a set up a new, a new service. So when you want to create a new service, you do kit create in the name of the service and we'll create everything for you. It will set up circle CI, um, we'll create the Docker file, um, and it will also, also, also create a make file. So that you can actually focus on writing the application logic and not setting up the container. The other thing that we're, we're, we really like at Segment is like powerful logging. So Kit uses Logress, it's a Go library that, that, that basically uh, has a, a lot of nice things inside. The first thing is that Logress, um, if it sees a terminal attached, it will output it in a human readable format. Um, so like that one. We extended this because we wanted to basically signal our service if we, if we see something that's not going right. We want to lower the, the, the log level to debug for a fixed time window. So what we do is that kit inside, uh, it will listen to a signal. I think it's USR1, so a user signal. And it will open a window of five minutes. In those five minutes, it will log to standard output all the debug logs. And this is what happens. The other nice thing is that when a terminal is not attached or you run everything in Docker, the logs will output in JSON. So this, with what I showed you before, um, basically with log spout or uh, elastic search, this would be parsed and we would be able to search by, uh, by time or environment over there. Um, Logris has also not, this not other nice thing that's called, basically, it's a, basically a context. So instead of basically formatting a string with all the stuff that you need, you, you, you do log.width and you pass, you pass it, uh, that M is just a map, um, of map string in interface. So you can pass in whatever you want, just the context of that, of that message. So you don't need to format the info, the info strings anymore. You will just pass a context. And those variables will be formatted in JSON in a nice way. The other big thing that, um, that we're really like, kind of proud of is it's metrics. So we use Datadog every day. Um, we're, we switch it from Stack Driver um, to Datadog, and we integrate all our services to Datadog. So right now, even if your service using Kit doesn't have any metrics in it, it will come out with memory, goroutines, and garbage collector pauses by default. So this ensures that the developers like don't have to set up that. So because we run a Datadog um, agent container on every host, we can make sure that we basically we already know where it's running and the developer doesn't have to set up that. So, and Kit has also not another nice thing. Um, so first thing is that because this, this, the statistics and metrics are there, you're encouraged to use it because you don't have to set it up. The second thing is that you can, we can build par powerful dashboard just basically parsing the code and checking what metrics you actually set it up. 
and we will serve up that with Terraform. The other thing is, is monitors. Um, we go crazy about monitoring our infrastructure because still we're just five people and we want to know if something is broken. So we built this that, that the, um, plugin, so, sorry, Terraform plugin, uh, that basically integrates with Datadog and it will set up kit. Um, it will basically like ask you what metric you, you want to monitor on and how you want to monitor and it will create the, the Terraform file for you. The other thing is how we empower because other people, because nobody, not everybody in the company is tech enough to, to know how to run a command line program. So we ask ourselves, how can we empower the others in the company so that these tools are easy to use? So we picked up the one thing that everybody uses the every day as segment, and that's Slack. So this is, we, just, we basically made an abstraction over what we had inside as a command line program, and we make it available in Slack. Like as you see here, I can deploy from Slack into a cluster, a, a specific service and tag. This was extremely useful. When nobody from infrastructure was available to deploy, and our main application w needed to, to, to be rolled back. But this is only one of the tools that we use. We also have some other abstraction in Slack for, um, for basically like querying uh, our database or ch checking how many calls a certain customer has done in a month. It basically simplifies the process for them and it also empowers them to do more so they, ca they can focus on, the, on doing their job better. So we, ex we, we're, we really spend a lot of time to provide this tooling to everybody in the company. The last thing I want to talk about is the concept of automation beyond segment. Um, so I show you like the big picture, how we went from automating infrastructure, developers, and the others in the company. But what about customers and partners? So segment is built as a hub of other tools, and these tools integrate with segment because, and they are built on segment. So our product basically is a combination of customers and partners. Customers use a segment for the value we provide to them. Uh, being able to integrate with one single hub and having a number of integration available just with the flip of a switch. That's super powerful. But investigating and, and, and studying how people use segment, we made us think that, that we can do more and we can spend more time automating. One example is that because we know what data you, you, you're like basically uh, piping into segment, we can create, we will be able to create customer's dashboard in, uh, in third party tools for basically for free. So you will just have to integrate with us and then we can automate the process for the customer. On the partner side, we're now seeing more and more applications made on top of segment. So they just build the logic and then let us maintain the pipeline. So we're now in, in the process of discovering how can we make that better? And we, how can we basically abstract the complex API that we have and, and the features that we have in a simple way for them? And from a product perspective, we have to make sure that, we ha that this happens because otherwise they won't integrate with us. And we, and, and so we have to make sure that we have the best tools. And this is we, why we're heavily investing in automation. In conclusion, I am really excited to see what will come up next with our infrastructure. About Kit, it will be open sourced, I think early next year. Um, Segment is, a, fan, is a, it's a big fan of open sourcing, so it will be uh, definitely something that we will make public. And I hope that, um, that basically like, these things will go out with much more powerful features that I show you today. And that's it. Thank you. Thanks. We have time for questions. If you'd like to ask a question, please line up for the microphone over here. Mm -hmm. 
Nobody has a question. Two questions. Uh, is the deploy Slack command open source somewhere that you actually have that as a plugin, or is it a Hubot, or is it just a straight Slack command? Uh, it's a straight Slack command. OK, so it's you're just curling some, yeah. something else that runs. Sorry? You're just like calling out to another API that actually does the deploy? Yeah, so we have an API around it, so that the, the, like, all the Slack commands will go through this yeah. API, and then we just set it up <clears> in Slack for them. OK. And it, um, changing logging level for debugging when you're on the local console, or you're doing that at the application layer, right? Not, it's not in the container itself, right? You, you, you kind of c connect to the container, and then you send that signal to the PID inside the container to give your, your debug logs. Right? Yeah, so we have an automation tool for that. That's another thing. <laughs> so basically, you, you tell um, the tool which service you want to basically like open this debug window, and we go on each uh, instance of that cluster and check if um, a service is running, and they will signal it in, inside the container. OK, so you don't have to manually go into the container. You have another tool that actually wraps that. Yeah. Is that open source? Not yet. OK. Nice. But we will. We will we'll open source it. All right. Do you write your own Datadog plugin for Terraform, or do you use some? Datadog? Datadog plugin yeah. for Terraform. Yeah, we wrote, we wrote our own for automating the, um, the monitors and the dashboards. Um, the monitors one is already actually open source. Uh, we created a pull request. We are still working on it. It's not like basically like ready uh, because it doesn't have the full feature set. Uh, but we, will, we are continuing to work on it. And it will be open source. Thank you. Uh, could you expand a little bit on uh, using CircleCI and Terraform? I thought that was pretty interesting, but I'm not sure. Like, does CircleCI use uh, do both Terraform plan and apply? Yeah. So um, what we do when we want to apply something uh, in, in the infrastructure is that we push the code, and we basically built a custom script to. Uh, it's basically like first we test that everything is correctly with planning, uh, and then if the planning goes fine. Um, the deployment process in, uh, in Circle CI will take care of applying uh, that for you. And that will store the state in, on S3. Was that difficult to set up? Uh, not really. It took two hours. So. Cool. So when you run changes against a branch, uh, it runs it on it own isolated infrastructure, I imagine, not running on production infrastructure? <laughs> Good question. Um, so right now, what we do is that we plan for, for each branch. So basically, when you open the pull request, we, we plan only. We don't apply the changes. But uh, that said, for, for staging, we have the staging branch, and we will apply for the staging branch. So staging and master are basically like staging and production. Anybody else? All right, great. All right. Another round of applause. Thank you.